Jackie Rum was excited to start her career as a registered nurse at an HCA hospital in California. But soon, she says, her job was making her sick. Yeah, my hair was falling out. I was losing weight. I mean, Jackie, you're almost shaking as you're talking about this. It's like you're a little traumatized. Maybe I wasn't made to be a nurse. Well, in these conditions, I don't think anybody was made to be a nurse. The conditions she's talking about relate to understaffing, which NBC News has investigated at HCA hospitals in five states, where some nurses and doctors say HCA's focus on profits, $5.6 billion last year, can put patients at risk. The quality of care that we give is not what we want to give. She says the hospital refused to let her work fewer hours, so after 13 months, she quit. But she had a problem. She'd signed a contract saying if she didn't work two years full-time, she'd have to pay back some of the $4,000 they said it cost to train her. Rum believes it wasn't training, but an 11-week orientation, which included basic onboarding, technical instruction, and shadowing an experienced nurse. We see these contracts as a form of indentured servitude. Bryn O'Neill is a lawyer and policy specialist at the largest nurses' union in the country, with over 220,000 members. Indentured servitude. Does that go too far? I don't think so, because it's requiring people to work out a term based on debt. These contracts are sometimes used by hospitals to staff the worst shifts and the sickest patients with the least experienced nurses, according to some of the 1,700 nurses O'Neill's union surveyed. In the past decade, these contracts have been used by a wide range of hospitals, including HCA, which says its training programs are more comprehensive and substantive than any standard job orientation. The other thing HCA and many other hospitals say is there just aren't enough nurses. We're in a nursing shortage. There are plenty of licensed nurses, but there's a real lack of safe nursing jobs. In Utah, Bree Fellows also signed an HCA contract. If she quit before two years, she'd have to pay back the $10,000 signing bonus they gave her, as well as up to $10,000 in training costs. Where's the hedgehog? <gasps> Fellers, who had two kids under two at the time, accepted a job on the overnight shift in labor and delivery. But six months later, she was pregnant, exhausted, and begging, she says, to work the day shift. She said, you're brand new. No, you can't. Were there some moments while you were doing this job that you just thought, I'm not safe? I'm not safe for these patients. I'm not safe for myself. Yes. Just like not catching things that I should have, like just staring at the screen at 3 a.m., it's just very scary. After 11 and a half months, she quit. The hospital sent letters demanding she return her upfront bonus of $10,000 as well as $6,000 to repay her training. It was very much a slap in the face, like, like, this has to be wrong. Frightened, she and her husband took out a new credit card and paid the $14,000 the hospital agreed to take. These contracts are bad for nurses and they're bad for patients. With debt hanging over their head, a nurse has a much harder time speaking out. HCA now tells us that since we started reporting on these contracts two months ago, they've decided not to use them anymore though they decline to say whether they will enforce the contracts nurses have already signed or reimburse nurses like Bree Fellows. Meanwhile, the federal government is getting involved. The Federal Trade Commission proposed a rule banning contracts like these, which are being used in an increasing number of industries. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.